Scott, thank you for joining us. How would you sum up your emotions after that one? At the end of the day, it's a point in the right direction, but I'm sure there are points that you'd want to reflect on there. Yeah, um, no, you're right. Point in the right direction. Um, we take it, wipe our mouth and move on. Um, I felt that we were very good in the first half and probably not so good in the second half. I know we had glimpses of, of when we got in there after the pitch and, and we attacked quite well, um, but we didn't do it enough, especially in that second half. Um, we played against a really good side tonight. They're wherever they are in the league now. Are they second? I don't know. Um, but they're there for a reason because they're a very, very good side um, with very good, good players. And we knew it was going to be a hard game tonight. Um, but I, I was really proud of my players um, overall. I think uh, certainly the first half, I thought we played some really good football, played out, played through, uh, and got you know got at them, even though. Our uh, chances wasn't, um, we didn't create loads of chances, but we created um, quite a few. Um, and then second half, it became end-to-end -end more so, which kind of suited them more. But it, I say end-to-end, -end, that's probably been a bit disrespectful to them. Um, we, we, we couldn't get out as well, um, and they, they kind of pressed against us, and we, we just couldn't seem to get out. Um, and then when we, um, when we did, we, we found spaces and we, we felt that we could hurt them. Um, so no, listen, I'm, I'm proud of the players, uh, it's a good point against a good side, so I'm pleased. In terms of the second half, do you think that was more of Stockport changing or was it a drop off in our own performance? Yeah, I think, I think you know, that's um, credit to us, is the fact that Stockport County changed their shape, but I think they changed their shape coming into the game, you know, they, they played a 4-2-3-1 in the first half and not seen them play that for a long time to be honest with you, um, so that's probably a credit to us really. Um, so, you know, um, but yeah, they, they, it, it was to start to get out, you know, second half. We we could have probably done with another pivot to, to build our play. Um, but I didn't want to change our attacking threat at the top of the pitch, obviously, because we wanted to get back in the game. Um, so we, we continued with our shape. I felt that, you know, once we got through the initial bit and got over the halfway line, like I said, I thought there were spaces for us to go and hurt them. There was a clear hand ball, clear as day, I've just seen it back. He actually passes it with his hand to, to his defending friend, who, who then clears the ball. Um, I, don't, I don't understand it. Yeah, at the end of the day, as you've already touched on, you know, Stockport are where they are for a reason. So the fact that we're sitting here reflecting on, you know, what could have been more than a point can only be a good thing, can't it? And it must give the lads, you know, especially considering the way we came back into the game, some encouragement heading into the last nine games of the season. Yeah, I think, um, I think the reason we feel a little bit flat off the back of the game is because we knew where the three points would have taken us. Um, and I think that's probably why there's a little bit of um, of a flat atmosphere um, in the dressing room because of that. But like I say, it's a, it's a point in the direction we want to go in against a good side. So we'll take it, we'll analyse it, we'll debrief and we move on and get ready for, for another one at the weekend. How good is it to have a player such as Claudio Lollis in such top form at the moment to, you know, as you say, not too many chances for us in the second half, but there was almost no doubt when he got put through on goal that he was actually going to miss that. And, you know, it's great to have a player in such good form, isn't it? Yeah, of course. I think that he had uh, a reasonably quiet night, actually. You know, that I think he had little bits and pieces, little flashes of brilliance at times. You can see he's obviously a good player. Um, you know, I thought he had a quiet night, but you, you want to keep him on the pitch because you know in a minute he's going to do what he did. And... Great, great finish. Great, actually, set from Dan Orsi as well. Good interplay between the two forwards and a, and a fantastic finish. So, no, we know, he, you know, even when he's not playing so well, I'm not saying he didn't play well. That's not what I'm saying. He just had a quieter night than normal. Um, but what a great finish again! Yeah, lots to look forward to in the last nine games of the season. It, you know, it's there's a lot coming thick and fast. And as you said last week sort of summed up quite well it's not over till it's mathematically over so you know there's lots to look forward to isn't there oh that's not even in my thoughts about it being over we're <laughs> I think if you look at the league table you know with the results at the weekend and Morecambe getting beat yesterday and you know the gods are shining on us a little bit with with, with the results over the weekend and of course we, we've had a what we call a positive point tonight because we have to call it that we're we're in a great we're probably out of all of all the teams that are capable of getting in the playoffs, we're probably in the best position. Thanks, Scott. Thank Sam. you. Hi, Scott. Would you have wanted that game to go on for another five minutes longer as it obviously felt that Crawley were the team most likely to get 
the the win at the end there. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, we had a throw in down on the opposite side of the pitch, and I was screaming for him to take it quickly because I, I felt that there would be another chance in the game. Um, and then when we got a long throw down the right hand side, I thought this is, this is going to be it, you know. And it, obviously, it didn't materialise to that. But yeah, we, we're never going to try and um, play for a draw, you know. And I, I felt that. Um, we look like the only team that could probably go and win it in them dying stages. You know, I don't want to be disrespectful to Stockport, um, but I did feel that we looked like the team that was going to go on. And obviously, it's yet again Crawley have rescued a, po- a rescued result towards the end of the game. So it kind of shows that fighting spirit that you kind of installed into the team. I mean, you must be delighted with that. That despite the score, despite w- where it's looking, you still find that kind of drive late on in the game to to rescue something. Yeah, I said to the players at half time, look. No matter what happens in this half, keep going because they played Thursday night on a, on a tough pitch at Salford. And we felt that we would be the fresher team tonight for obvious reasons. They've travelled down. Um, so we knew that if we just kept going, you know, possibly we'll get something from the game. No, no matter what happens, even if they score first, keep going and keep believing because, you know, I, I felt that they p- potentially could run out of steam. Um, I know they made a lot of changes as well, probably needed to um, because of that reason. Um, but no, the players the players kept going right to the end. Really proud of them. How much of an impact did Adi Adiemo have when he came on? I think he put a lot of pace into the game, injected a bit of energy um, when he came on. Yeah, for sure. No, Adi's, Adi gives us that, doesn't he? You know, he gives us that little bit of energy, that spark, that um, you know, that running power. Um, I think Kellen ran out of steam a little bit in the second half. And we just needed to make them changes quickly, um, and yeah, he, he definitely added added something to to the game. And were you impressed by Harry Forster, who was a particularly live wire in, in the first half, um, especially, and obviously was unlucky not to not to score and was creating a lot of the attacking attacking moves. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, you know, he was one that we were mindful of maybe bringing off, but he just kept going, didn't he? You know, he kept it, he kept you know uh, creating attacking threats all the time down that down that left hand side and. And we just felt that we we can't take him off. You know, he, he needs to stay on. And I mean, he, you know, we, we we changed it later on in the game. And obviously, Nick come on once we'd scored, and we wanted Nick to kind of shore it up a little bit more. So, um, but yeah, he's he's been fantastic. He's been you know um, since he's been playing and starting, he's been outstanding. You mentioned obviously Lolos didn't have his best of games, but he still showed the quality when it mattered the most. And I mean, you must be delighted with that, that you can just have these players that can just find these moments in, in such key parts of the game. Yeah, we probably ask too much of him because we know he's such a good player. We want him in the game all the time, but sometimes that doesn't happen because of the opposition. The opposition don't allow you to have good players like that in the game. They you know, they nullify your threats really well, and they did that quite well. Um, but Clyde has got real qualities. We know that if you keep him on the pitch, something's going to happen. So, there's going to be an opening, um, you know, that drops to him, and, and you know that he's got that quality to finish the action. And he certainly did that. Thank you. Cool. Andy, anything to add? Yeah, just a quick one, there, Scott. You, you mentioned slightly flat because you knew what what could happen. You know, if you won, you were in the playoffs. But how do you feel that the fact that you got something out of it? You're still a danger sort of side, if you like, because of the form that you've been in and um, the games in hand. So other clubs may well look at you as being the side that can really get in there, you know. So yeah, possibly. You know, it's all to play for. Yeah, possibly. We've just got to concentrate on ourselves. I'm not too bothered about what the other sides think of us. I think we have to keep, you know, working extremely hard on the training ground debriefing the games in a positive manner, watching the opposition play in real detail, getting the game plan right. I think it was tough to to understand what Stockport was going to do. I, I felt that they might they may start with a back three, um, but they didn't. They, they started with a back four. So you prepare for one thing and then they change it with the team sheet. So, uh, But that that's kind of football, that's, that's coaching. And, and then you know, you get organised and, and and attack each game as best as you can. Um, and w- what other teams think of you, they think of you. It doesn't really matter either way. It, it would have been helpful if the manager had done. You, you, uh, <laughs> you mentioned it last time, and I heard the same interview, when the Notts County manager said about balls in the box, and you thought, right, we're, we're gonna, we know what to do here. But unfortunately, the uh, Stockport manager didn't give you that 
clue, if you like? Well, no, we, we, we knew that we had to attack them differently because yeah. they've got some really good centre-halves at Stockport who, if you, if you fling balls in from <coughs> deep areas, they'll let it out. They're quite good at that. So we wanted to try and manoeuvre the ball um, higher up the pitch and try and get little passes down the sides of them as opposed to just slinging balls in from deeper positions because we knew that they'd defend them properly and probably would struggle to defend passes in the box. Um, you know, but listen, they're a really good side and I'm sure they'll get I'm sure they'll get automatic promotion. Um and I, I hope they do because they're they're a good side and, you know, they've um they've done they've done great since they come up from the National League a couple of years ago and fair play to them. Joy, thank you for joining us. That's a battling tough point that we've earned ourselves here at the Bournemouth Stadium tonight. Can I get your overall reflection on the game first? Yeah, I think it's a good point. Um, again, came from behind. Boy showed determination again to get the point. And we're a bit disappointed because we knew where a win would have taken us. But all in all, I think it's a good point against a team that's up there. Yeah, the gaffer said the same thing at the end of the day. Stockport are second in the league, they're fighting for automatic promotion. To be disappointed with only a point shows not only how far this team have come since we were at this stage last year, but how much the lads have sort of grown over the season as well. So, you know, it must be conflicting emotions in the dressing room because at one stage, obviously, it's, it's a great point, but you, you also want a bit more. Yeah, exactly that. Um, I think when the gaffer was talking, he reiterated where we would have been if we won, but he was also positive and said that it is a good point against a good team. That's like, uh, yeah. Sorry. yeah, yeah. There's, there's not much more you can say about the the whole situation. The gaffer also touched on how results sort of went our way over the weekend as well. So, you know, there is that element of of looking where the three points would have taken us. But at the end of the day, there's still lots to be proud about, lots to be positive about, and there's some big games coming up, isn't there? Yeah, there are. Um, obviously, we go away first. I think we'll be looking to win that game even though we are away from home I think we're on a, a good run of form so we'll go into that game with all the confidence bringing it in from the last couple of weeks yeah not not lots of minutes for you recently but you've come into the side especially in these last two games you know obviously with the Harrogate injury with Dion as well you came in there and you put in some really assured performances obviously you would have never doubted your ability but how pleasing has it been to sort of come in and sort of you know perform so well and you know not have to really get stuck in like some players would yeah um, obviously for me personally um, I've been happy with my performances and just happy I can help the team to positive uh, results and also I think my my time not playing it was a bit frustrating but I think that time sitting out helped me like learn a lot from the players that were playing and this, and the gaffer as well and feel like maybe he thought the time was right that he could put me in and he trusted me. And I just want to thank him for trusting me and hopefully I can keep playing well when I do play and help the team get as, as high as we can. Yeah, there is a lot of exciting games coming up. We've only got nine to go this season. It's sort of flown by. You know, th there's lots to look forward to. And as you say, we're on a good run of form and, you know, anything's possible, isn't it, for this team? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. We're all positive. Like, we all want to get into that playoff place we think that is, is very achievable so uh, the next few games we're, we're going to look to attack it and try and win hopefully thank you Joy hi Joy um, we're just speaking to Scott just now and he obviously said there was a little bit of disappointment knowing of what you could have achieved but I think just touched on there I mean it just shows how far Corey have come to even be saying that after a point against Stockport that could win the league at the end of the season yeah um, but to be fair I think even from the start of the season like uh, even though we were tipped to probably go down. We had we knew what we had in the building, so we had a lot of belief that we could do something. And at this stage of this, this stage of the season, I don't think that we're surprised that we're here. Because at the start, the gaffer put a lot of confidence into us. The way we play, our style, the players that he brought in, even though a lot were from non-league. Like he brought the right players in to fit the style and I think it's, it's worked nicely. And what's it been like to, to work under under Scott and how much has he helped you personally to develop as a, as a player this season? Yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's been a bit frustrating sometimes when I haven't been playing, but I've got to respect his decisions and ultimately if he thinks I wasn't ready, then I respect it, but he's, he's, a, good, he's a good gaffer, yeah. But you must be yeah, delighted yeah. with I mean, how it's going the last few games to be able to come to the team and to, to really kind of show what you're about and to 
be in part such a good run of form that obviously has put Crawley into such a good position to go for the playoffs. Yeah, I've been enjoying it. It's been hard battles, but it's been it's been fun. Obviously, last season I was at um, in Conference South, so it is a step up. But yeah, it's been it's been fun battles that I've had the last three games. Yeah, I mean, what's that been like the step up to to League Two, and how how have you found it in trying to maybe adapt your game to to suit the league? Yeah, it's been tough, uh, but. I've tried to take on board a lot, like as much in, as much information as I can, and like I said before, like watching players that are established in this league, like Dion, and trying to take bits from his game and implement it into my game. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Cool.